Yo, what's up guys? Rob Shoegraph here with Resort Fitness. Got a minute on my lunch break. I thought I'd share something with you that I've been putting together. So this is, I call this my, uh, my blunder bell. Okay. I get that name. It's a, it's a piece of fitness equipment. That's what I'm proclaiming uh, anyways. That, um, kind of, I got the name from, it's a stupid name, but I like it. I'm sticking with it. I got the name from uh, Blunt, Blunder Bus, which is like an old school 16th century shotgun that I think was used up in World War II. One of the war, anyways, whatever. But the whole point of those guns is if you see like a pilgrim, like a you know, cartoon pilgrim, he's got like a shotgun that looks like it has a big horn on the end of it, that's a Blunder Bus. Uh, so the appeal of a Blunder Bus is that you could put, like, people will put like shards of glass and pieces of metal and rocks and whatever in them and they would sh point at something and shoot and you know kill it that's the idea so it shoots anything and I, I, I put this thing together this ugly freaking thing and uh, with the uh, with the appeal that you could put you know just about anything in it that has weight and change out the weights on the fly and I wanted something that in other words you know you don't have to unscrew anything you just you just pull it out and put it in or whatever, right? It could be a mix of stuff, just a bunch of heavy crap you have lying around. It could be uh, things like this. I feel like everybody in the world has, or at least has access, knows somebody with a basement full of old one inch uh, fitness equipment, right? And old school barbells. Maybe less so in like today's, you know, uh, COVID climate, et cetera, with all gyms being closed, this stuff's probably in higher demand. But before that, I mean, I literally have people all the time saying, hey, I got a bunch of old, you know, one inch plates, I'll give them to you for like nothing, right? So I have hundreds of pounds of one inch plates. I could fill this bag up with 100, I did, the other day I did 120 pounds, I was doing swings, right? I'll show some of this stuff. And uh, so that's the thing, I want it to be like easy to change out, I'll hold anything, and it'll allow me to do a, very, uh, a bunch of different exercises. Um, now I have all the equipment, like if you've been following my channel for, for a while, I have equipment that allow me to do this stuff. But I will admit, I kind of made this as like a, not a joke, but like a, uh, just sort of, I was, it was a Friday night, I was just kind of interested in it. This is my second version of it. My first is over here, it has these little handles, I'll talk about that. But, um, I made this kind of just to see, so I could say, hey, if I got a buddy who wants to buy a kettle, but he's kettlebell shopping or something, and he'd ask him about weights, and if he just wants to do swings, this is an actual conversation I had recently, I could say, you know, why don't you just make this thing, and for like 10 bucks, and you'll have as heavy of swinging weight as you could possibly stand. Um, and then if you really like them and you don't want to look like a, you know, a, a cheapskate, you can actually buy the kettlebells down the road if you want to. Whatever, however you want to, however you want to spin it. But I found that I've been, uh, I've been using it. I made it uh, a little over a week ago and I've been using it because it's so, um, because I'm lazy, right? It's so easy if I'm doing kettlebell swings or one arm rows, like crock rows, super heavy, you know, whatever. And there's a few other things you could do with that I'll show. Probably a million things. Um, this is just a, my, you know, second draft. Uh, it's so easy to use. I've just been using this instead of my kettlebells, which is kind of stupid. Plus, it has a neutral grip option, which I kind of like. It was, it was an accident. It was like a mistake at first, and then I just found it. It's like a serendipity, right? I just kind of found I, I actually prefer. It. So let me talk about talk about these bricks. Like I said, four and a half pounds. Whatever, you could use rubber rocks, sand bat, you know, anything. Use your imagination. Um, horseshoes. Uh, so what I have in here, this is the, the secret one. Oh, look in here. Let me do this. So I took three shopping bags, just heavy duty shopping bags, right? These things, these particular ones are rated for 44 pounds a piece. And I know that because I got them on Amazon and that was just, advertised on there. There's like six of them for like 20 bucks or something. Everybody has shopping bags lying around. You don't have to use these ones. These are just the ones I got because I knew they had a marked weight limit. I originally was not going to use the carpet. I'll 
I'll talk about the carpet in a second. So I wanted to get, get these suckers that are pretty heavy duty but pretty cheap also. So my original thought was to use the, the, the whatever the these are, straps that are on there, which is why I like, took this here and I like, break, like rolled them up together and then covered them with duct tape. And I just didn't trust it. I just, that's what it came down to. I just didn't know if it would hold. I don't know. I don't have a, like a freaking uh, um, sewing doctorate or whatever would take to know that. All right, so uh, what I decided to do, I, I, we got a new carpet in the room and I, um, I had a bunch of extra carpet lying around, so I cut some strips. And I, while I was cutting it, I'm like, man, this stuff is so hardy. And carpet, I guarantee you, you could actually probably make money getting carpet scraps, right? Because people have it and they, you know, they could burn it or they could pay somebody to take it away. Um, neither of those are that appealing. Uh, or you could pick it up and now you have this blunder bell, okay? So what I did was I took the carpet, I took two pieces of carpet, and you can make this a lot nicer, this is just me being lazy. I took two pieces of carpet, I have one lining this way, right? I just cut it so it kind of goes like halfway up the wall, right? You can uh, vary to your liking and to your shopping bags uh, specs. I have another piece going the other way, and I cut like big kettlebell handle size holes in it, and I put duct tape around it. Mainly just to kind of stop any sort of fraying, but also give it a little bit a nicer grip. Again, like I said, this is super low tech, super cheap. But, and then, so no butts, yeah. And then I took duct tape and I just went all the way around the bag several times um, so that I could cut into the bag and it would keep the, uh, uh, you know, keep it from tearing, keep that under control, right? And plus we have these like little, uh, I don't know, I wish I knew words. These things running up the side, which is where the handles are. All right, probably the strongest part of the bag. Um, <clears throat> so it stops the seam from tearing on these sides. Now the downside to that <clears throat> is if you want to do double arm swings or double arm anything, unless you have like pretty little fingers, they're not going to feel very good when you try to put both of them in there. Hence why I did start doing these neutral grip, right? Okay, so let me show you a few things you could do with this. Maybe I'll do some editing and put that in the beginning. I probably not. But um, let, I'm gonna load this thing up with, uh, I'll show you a few things. I keep saying that, but I, I will. I'm gonna show you stuff, all right? So I got all these plates here, right? Let's just use these, because so you got, we got five, Let's just count, let's count together. All right, we got five, 10, 20, that's a 10, 30, okay, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. All right, just for fun, we'll make it 85. We'll throw a break, 84 and a half. Throw a break, throw a break in there. Um, so I got an 80, what did I say, 84 and a half pound, give or take, um, dumbbell, blunder bell, right? That's really sticking. All right, so basically what I have here is a, go so you can see me. Like I said, let's say you want to do some pretty heavy rows, right? And like I said, I put up to 120 pounds this. I will explain, I'll explain why you choose the carpet. Yeah, let me just do these first, right? So I'm here, I got this, this grip, I'm going through the through basically all three bags and the carpet handles that I've made together. Boom, I can hit these, hit these rows. Now let's say I'm doing like a, a, a drop set or something. Let's say I'm doing like a triple drop set, right? I'm just trying to just crush myself. I go to failure on this. I take with a with a you know pretty heavy weight, take 20 pounds out, boom, 20 pounds off, and I go, right? Uh, conversely, I want to throw an extra 20 pounds in, just drop them in, no big deal, right? Um, as far as swings go, you know, they look like, they look like this. Can you see me? This is terrible. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I really need a freaking camera person. How many times have I said that? Doggone piece of... 
weight. I can't remember if I showed Zercher squats yet, but you could do like a variation of that with these, right? With the handles that are already on there. Dip down, put this on my forearms. And of course, any kind of carry variation, curls, right? Um, if I were to take one of these uh, round slings or rigging loops or whatever. And I just put this in the handles. Now I can have, I'm gonna embarrass myself, I'm gonna go do this. Right? If I can do like, hey, that's terrible. Hammer curls or something. Right? I could, uh, Take this, sling it through, make myself now I got like a dip belt or a pull up belt. It's honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do 85 pounds cold or at all. But I could uh, take this, right? You see what I mean? Like that, right? Come up here. I'm going to hurt myself, but. <sighs> cool. That yeah, kind of did it. Right, so a lot of variations. Oh, one other thing. One other thing. If I got like these motorcycle tie downs, I've talked about these before. I could fit this through it through the handles. I could do this with the purple thing too. But now I got. I'll come closer in a second. It's 85 pounds. I'm already exhausted. I got a carabiner I can strap to this, hanging from like a pulley system, like a spotting, a kind of pulley or whatever. And now on the fly, I can do any sorts of, you know, sort of pulley exercises, tricep extensions, whatever. It's just like a vessel for a weight. It's one of these things what I'm talking about. They're like three dollars. I don't know, something like that. Um, so I would not go overhead with this thing. I think it would be a very bad idea, right? It doesn't really matter how it's balanced for the stuff I'm doing with it. If I was doing something like overhead uh, snatches, right? If I'm doing like a that kind of thing, you know, I just wouldn't, right? I would, I would probably die. And that's mainly because stuff's gonna roll, could roll out of it. I also don't really, I don't know, I don't know if I trust. The bottom not falling out. I think that thing is, would probably hold 400 pounds, really. Just because carpet's so ridiculous. Don't quote me on that. But I just, I don't know. Just out of principle, it seems like a terrible idea. All right? But, you know, if you come up with a better solution and you want to risk your head, I won't personally stop you or know about it. Um, oh, really important, kind of, as far as design. The reason why I, did, why I added the carpet other than obviously just adding reinforcement, was because, like I said, I want to do like more ballistic movements like kettlebell swings or more, more like blunderbell swings with it, right? So, you know, it's not as simple as just this holds 44 times 3 pounds, right? Uh, 132 pounds. It's not probably 132 pounds if it's just chilling, but if you're swinging it, right? And like down here, right where it stops, all of a sudden we got all that force, boom, hits the bottom, right? And heavy weight, freaking plates come flying out from behind you, right? So it's a lot more weight than just 120 pounds, depending on the movement you're doing. So I wanted that extra reinforcement. All right, um, how much do I have then? Uh, honestly, I really think that a lot of people could put this together for free. It costs, it was uh, really the, the most important piece would probably just be a, a sharp uh, exacto knife, right? Or I used a, like a utility, utility blade, right? Um, but like almost everybody has shopping bags. I'll tell you how much I have. I have zero for the carpet because uh, I had a ton of it lying around. 
I had the duct tape already. Um, the shopping bags I bought, I did buy, but uh, you probably have them in your house. Um, uh, they were, like I said, uh, I'll link to them, but they were like 20 bucks for six, right? Uh, there's a place called, I don't remember, I found a place online that sells like crazy heavy duty bags. They're like 500 pound, 600 pound rating, used for like moving firewood and like, like heavy, uh, like yard debris or something. Like I like rubble sacks, but they have handles on them too. But the only one I could find that really fit the bill was on, uh, it was in uh, somewhere um, in the UK and it's just like shipping would have been insane. So I didn't do it, I just decided to do that. But um, the point is there's, there's a better way to do this. Hopefully this gets some creative juices going. And of course, if it, you might say like, oh, well this is, you know, this is what sand bells are. This is, but two things, number one, um, sandbags, sand bells, uh, they're great, but they're not really designed for this. They, they, they're not as, um, well, first of all, they're just really freaking expensive. Like that stuff is expensive. If you buy something that is for fitness, it's the price just goes up tenfold, right? So, um, and, and then like, let's say you buy like a sand bell, it's like, you know, a, a 25 pound sand bell, you spend 40 bucks on it. Like it's 25 pounds. You can't really do much more with it. I can, I literally, I've done thousands of swings with between 50 and all the way up to 120 pounds and it hasn't budged, right? Um, and again, it's free pretty much. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it, I guess. Uh, I think it'd be cool if this is a video, stupid long, I need to get back to work. But I think it'd be cool if somebody like uh, Spud, right, Spuddy, if you guys made, I'm saying like you're watching this right now, but watch it, okay? I'll tag you, I think it's a way to do that. Um, if you made like a good version of this, one that's like kind of cool looking, um, that'd be sweet. Like those, that heavy nylon material you guys always use. You could like punch handles in there with grommets or some something that's like reinforced. I guarantee you if you made like something, well you guys know, but to anybody who doesn't, this stuff, if you've never seen me talk about it before, just like heavy duty nylon, this sucker right here will hold three, 4,000 pounds without any stress, or without any shown stress on it. Right? Imagine if you had a whole bag of that. Whoa, dude, that's what I dream about, man. <laughs> All right, guys, Rob Shoecraft, three sword fitness. I hope you, uh, I don't know, I hope you got something out of this, right? Um, have a great day. Right, subscribe to my channel, please. Bye bye.